Hello and welcome to this video on data visualization with me, James from Matador Software. Today we're going to be looking at the pitfalls of pie charts. Now, pie charts are a very emotional topic. You tend to get a lot of people that really dislike them. Um, and some people on the other side of the fence who are quite passionate about the usage of pie charts within their data visualization. It's something you have to be very careful of when using. And I'm going to show some real world examples, look at some principles and maybe alternatives to using pie charts as well as when you may want to use them. So that's coming up today in this tutorial. Okay, so if you've been living under a rock and never seen or used the pie chart, these essentially are used to show a parts to whole relationship for categorical or nominal data. The slices in the pie typically represent percentages of the total, usually with these slices of the pie adding up to 100% total and therefore we can show the proportions of the pie chart throughout. So before I go into any, you know, any opinions from either side of the fence, are pie charts bad by definition? So if we assume that we use charts to make information easily understandable, make it easy to swiftly compare different sets of data, you know, data-driven decisions in an instant, or convey a decent set of information without increasing complexity, does a pie chart enable us to do this? Well, within the case against pie charts, the basic premise is that pie charts are poor at communicating data. They take up a lot of space and are harder to read than the alternatives, such as a bar chart. It is a fact that the brain's not very good at comparing the size of angles and because there's no scale, reading accurate values can be difficult. And as you add more categories, segments or colours, the problem then starts to get worse. However, the case for pie charts, some people, some defenders would say their circular shape efficiently conveys to the viewer they're looking at the proportion of a whole and because they're familiar, they can be understood um, with extra axis labels and legends or, or such. Now I've, I've read up on this, I've been doing data visualization for some time um, and I've also asked these questions in forums such as LinkedIn and Reddit and spoken to people and this is sort of a summary of the information. A lot of it's common sense but some's quite interesting. So really in the case against pie charts we've got the quantity is represented by slices and humans aren't great at gauging differences from angles. When there's similarity in the data, a pie chart makes it difficult to decipher between percentage differences, especially if they're not very large. They are easy to abuse and apply bias without even knowing it. So we're going to actually look at a famous case by, by Steve Jobs, especially when you look at things like 3D pie charts, which add even more complexity and they're harder for the human to immediately understand. And they may require labeling, uh, so you could use a bar chart instead anyway, and end users naturally, or, or the human eye, understands rectangular shapes better, especially when there's an axis. However, in the case for pie charts, uh, pie and donut charts are very recognisable. Many end users like them due to familiarity. I did see a good quote where someone said, they're not going to die on a, on a hill uh, over a paycheck regarding pie charts. So sometimes, you know, even though it may not be the most visually correct thing to use, sometimes it's what people want and, and you know, you can, you can enable that with a bit of advice or pushback. They can be useful when comparing two to three categories, especially if there's a clear divide in percentage quantity. Um, and like I said, if a report consumer asks for them, you can advise on maybe alternatives, but at the end of the day, if they want it, you can see the best way to incorporate it in your report or dashboard. So I've created two very simple pie charts in Power BI to show a category and let's say their their percentage of sales or total sales and how they shape up as proportions. Now these are in no way excellent examples, they, I just wanted to make them sort of as standard as possible. So in the first example on the left, if we don't have any extra labeling, it can become very hard to actually decipher um, who's doing better than the other. So for example, in the orange label, Europe North, there's 120 there. However, in, in Africa, there's 112. As these proportions are quite similar and they're angled, it's very hard for the end user to actually decipher 
what the better value is and by how much. And on the example on the right, with some labeling, yes, it is easier to see, but you can see in the Europe East example, it's still hard to actually get all the information in without some being cropped. Um, and with five categories, it's actually just very tricky to understand what's going on. And we have to add legends and access and so on. So what's an alternative that we could use? So as I said at the start, I didn't want to make great examples of either chart, but the simple bar chart is actually usually a much nicer alternative because you immediately can order it and see the trend. And it's easier to do that when it's a rectangular geometrical shape and its um, values lay along the Y axis. And we also didn't need to color code it like we would be dependent on in a pie chart. Again, a very simple bar chart, so it's not too much bias between these visuals or difference, but it is more clear cut. So I wanted to sort of round out this short video tutorial on an interesting case that Steve Jobs was, um, was involved in. And this presentation was at the Apple Macworld keynote in 2008 and Wired, the publication created this, this image where they sort of tried to correct things and maybe take some of the bias out of the late Mr. Jobs presentation. So he did use a pie chart. He also used a 3D pie chart, um, which was slightly tilted. So it made things even harder to decipher. So if we look at what Wired were doing, essentially the main issue here is that the Apple's share in green, the 19.5% um, looked almost bigger than a 21%. Now, like we said, the issue here is when there's small percentage points, you angle it and humans struggle to, to really see the difference. Now, this actually led to Steve Jobs being called a, a snake oil salesman by a journalist in The Guardian. And this is a way that you can abuse pie charts. Now, some of the time you may not even mean it, but there could be malice involved if you want to influence people quickly when they're trying to decipher um, chart values. And we don't want to do that within our, our data visualization. So it's an important point to note. And if you can avoid that, great, if you are going to incorporate pie charts. Now, in closing, what I would say is that pie charts themselves you know spatially and with some data visualization principles aren't a great option but they can look aesthetically pleasing so as long as you remember to use pie charts and not abuse them keep your categories low and if you are going to use them make sure that you can allocate a decent amount of space with some narration and context but there are just some hard data visualization principles that they do um go against uh, and that could be problematic as usual if you like this content please feel free to like comment subscribe and share thank you